Well, the Springbok squad announcement, dusted, done, delivered. Your reaction to that, please send us your WhatsApp voice notes. The players that have been selected, what do you make of them? And also the World Cup itself. I know that there's been a throw of a number of names as well that have not been included. Uh, but let me leave that to you. You will interact as South Africa. Tell me exactly what you've made of Jacques Lindeberg's selection today, this afternoon. Uh, which, as you know, various stations, including 947, carry that live. Wow. Enjoyed that every bit of the way. Got a guest in studio. Going to be chatting about that in a second. Uh, but before, hey, for the very last time, Africa. We were hoping Morocco would, but they didn't. This is lovely play. The Almeida, Basha, and here's Karshawi. Karshawi's cross. Diani with the simple header. And after a hat-trick against Panama, Kadi Diatujani makes it four goals in two games. And inside a quarter hour, Les Bleus lead Morocco by a goal to nil. Controlling things at the back, dinking it forward into that little hole. Oh, lovely touch from Dali, releasing Diani. Le Sommers in the middle, the cutback for Kenza Dali. And that's two. And it's a spectacular goal. And France are on fire in these opening 20 minutes here in Adelaide. They lead Morocco by 2-0. There's El Shad. Under pressure, it falls for Le Sommer. Well, everything they touch turns to bleu at the moment. 3-0. Eugenie Le Sommer with her seventh World Cup goal for Besho. Manages to get the cross in. It's a great ball for Le Sommer. What a cross from Vicky Besho. And Eugenie Le Sommer just puts the punctuation mark. Well, with that being said and done, Africa's last hope at the Women's World Cup ended as Morocco went out, easily beaten 4-0 by France in Adelaide uh, in the last 16 tie this afternoon. So the North Africans, uh, they follow the likes of South Africa as well as Nigeria out of the tournament, although the fact that the continent has also delivered three of its four representatives into this knockout stage uh, must also be seen, though, as a triumph as it came against all expectations. So, yeah, well done. Well tried, Morocco. Africa, however, remained without a win in the knockout stage of the tournament after nine editions. And France, whose tally of 12 goals in this tournament is the most that they have scored at a Women's World Cup. Uh, they go on now to meet co-hosts Australia in Brisbane in Saturday's quarterfinals. So, yeah, good luck to them. Hard luck, Morocco. And still talking about football, going to be tracking the game that's currently live. Richards Bay. Yo. Back on the Premiership front here, at home. Richards Bay as well as Golden Arrows. Uh, KZN Derby of sorts, man. So Richards Bay are playing at home. They trail Golden Arrows by a goal to no. Uh, so 1 0 no to Golden Arrows, a goal that was scored nice and early in the 36th minute of the game. Remember him? Ryan Moon. Yeah, he came through and scored there uh, for Abafana Best Tender. So we'll keep you up to date with that score. Uh, later on, though, Orlando Pirates at the Orlando Stadium are going to be playing against uh, Royal AM. Uh, so a busy, busy day indeed. And also just going back to that uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. You know, France, Morocco, 4-0. Earlier it was Colombia versus Jamaica. So Jamaica, who've shown us some of the best football uh, at this World Cup, themselves uh, bowing out of the tournament. So, as I say... It's, it's that business end of any tournament. And sad to see them go. The original room divider is in the building. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. I still think that whatever happened and transpired uh, at the World Cup, none of us, none of us ever expected that to happen. Hello! in which it had worked out. So, yeah, congratulations. They made Netherlands work hard for their goals. They didn't find it very, very easy uh, to play against Manana Banyana. Yes, we could question uh, Kaylin Swart being in the starting lineup. What was the politics behind it? Why her over Stig Lamini? But overall, um, making history, being the first senior team to qualify for the round of 16, I mean, it doesn't get bigger than that. that <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm a superwoman.
Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Marala Sports Worldwide. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. Well, happily so or sadly so, it has been weeks of predictions galore as names were being thrown into the hat and also bets were being made as to who would make the final cut of the Springbok head coach Jacques Nindaba's 33-man squad that will be representing the country at the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Now, I don't even know if your favorite player got the nod or was unfortunately cut off. And it's always joy, though, for others. Heartbreak for many, many more. Uh, but one thing that remains pretty solid and pretty true is that all of those lads will be representing our beautiful country. Let's bear that in mind. They need, they deserve our support right now. I think the depth uh, that the defending world champions has also meant that there would always be several winners and losers, though, as the coach as well as his coaching staff managed to cut this group. I think what I absolutely love, though, about our current coach and the squad is that it features a very strong mix of experience and some of the best up-and-coming young players in the country. Uh, while there was disappointment for three of those starting 15 from the 32-12 victory over England in Yokohama, that was about four years ago, they were ruled out by injury as well as illness. Or is it? I don't know. That's why I brought this man in uh, to tell me and give me his thoughts. And to help me break it down, I've got the Bulls special project manager and also former Springbok flank forward himself, a former room divider, Tando Manana. Welcome to the show, sir. Rob, good afternoon, good late afternoon to, to you, firstly, and also to the listeners at home and those that are drives. Could we be back? Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I was behind the mic, so I'm just behind the desk now. I know, and you're doing <laughs> such a, a great job. I mean, I'll tell people exactly what you're doing at yeah. the Bulls and it's yeah. been of record-breaking proportions and that is why we, we're more than proud of what you've done in terms of transforming that sector. I won't ask any direct question for now. Yeah, We sat, we watched and I could see, I could read your reaction in terms mm. of when names were being mentioned. Yeah, Just what's, what's been a tandem and a reaction overall to the squad announcement today? Rob, I think um, coming in today, I have to say I was very much optimistic that uh, we've got enough depth in terms of um, selecting that 33-man squad that would go to France. Uh, I think late last night, uh, I was quite comfortable with even the prediction that I'd made, uh, not knowing that something was brewing within the Springbok camp. Uh, and therefore, I mean, in terms of, you know, uh, we'd be missing very, very... Uh, important players, I call them the spine. Uh, if you look at the spine, you look at the center, you look at the fly off and you look at the lock. So we've lost, you know, those experienced players, um, senior players, that is one vice captain. In fact, two vice captains that we've lost. And we've also lost someone who, when it came to line outs, I mean, he was the master of it all with Diaga. Um, but also what's also for me been frustrating in terms of the announcement is that from depth we only have now, I can honestly say we have a starting 15 that's strong enough. And then the rest, you know, a lot of questions in terms of who sits in the, bank, in the bench. Uh, I remember last World Cup, there were talks of, um, you know, the, the bomb squad. Yes. You know, I think that it won't, won't, be, won't be mentioned as a bomb squad. I think we'll struggle there to get that word uh, bomb mm -hmm. uh, because we no longer have those uh, players from the bench. I mean, if you look... Um, Are you talking about lack of what explosive players coming off the bench? Yeah, coming off the bench, if you look at the team. I mean, the team yeah. is still a South African team, but I mean, we had two strong teams going into the World Cup. Mm. You know, going to the World Cup, I can honestly say we've got a, a very good starting 15. So if one looks at you've got a fly-off, but you only have one fly-off. What if something happens a day before and captains run to, to Mani Libok? So all of a sudden, Mani Libok has become South Africa's number one fly after the World Cup. If you look back at the start of the URC, middle of URC, no one would have predicted that. We would mm -hmm. have looked at the Leinster Tigers fly off, Andre Pollard, to take us through to the defense of the World Cup. Unfortunately, that's no longer happening. Although he'll be part of the non-playing uh, reserves, but in order for you to get back into the World Cup, you've got to prove that a player is injured and is out for a certain period of time before you can call in a replacement. Uh, same as Lucanio M, outside center. 
Uh, we know that Jesse Creel could uh, fill in as a second uh, placement at 30. Now he's the only one at 13. If something happens to Jesse Creel, who then slots in mm. jersey number 13, do you put in a young Kenan Moody? Because he can play at 13. I mean, he's never played there at that level at a World Cup, let alone a World Cup. I mean, uh, it's an exciting time for Moody. Yeah, I I'll, I'll get to those. It's just that your emphasis on yeah. fly half yeah. uh, triggered something. I was going to go to him a little bit later on, though, yeah. but he is already on the line. Um, former Springbok fly half himself. Yeah. Just to pose that question and others, Nas Boiter, the legend, is here on the line. Nas, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening, Robert. Oh, man, your take. And as we break it down, and Tando's here lamenting the fact that there's only one fly half that's going through. And I said, ah, perfect time. Let me bring Nas in uh, because he would know more than most how to handle this particular one. Your overall impression, though, about the squad? I believe for the players that's available, it's unfortunate with the players that's actually injured. Uh, if you, you know, if you can mention Andre Pollard and Um uh, and Lewitt, uh, three very experienced, quality players that's not available. But I believe what we have available, uh, it's not a bad squad. Um, you know, I'm. Um, I'm looking at it, and I think that, uh, you know, up front, uh, we've got really no question marks. Um, I like Marnie Lubbock at, at fly-off. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the way we're kicking against Argentina now the uh, last weekend, I don't think there's too many questions. We know he can. he's a really a good kicker, so one half of a day doesn't really bother me. Um uh, just a little bit of a question, Robert, is uh, the midfield. Uh, mm -hmm. Damien, Andre Estreisen and Jesse Creel. Um, very strong, very physical. Andre Estreisen is playing extremely well at the moment. So it depends. What we see is, for me, is a good squad. It depends on what game plan they're going to apply in the World Cup. Uh, and I think that will give us then uh, really the better answer to say, OK, the selections they've done today, um, you know, are the better ones. Yeah, I think, Tando, as we listen to Nas, uh, just mm. raising a question about what's happening in the middle of the field. Um, Jesse Creel being highlighted. I know that's going to be his third World Cup that he's going to be featuring in. What are your worries around that area that Nas has had? Look, I think uh, obviously Rob Nas has, you know, alluded to the fact of the physicality that's in the midfield. Mm. But for me, it's just the distribution distribution point from those players yeah. that is mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. You've got explosive yeah. wings both on the left and the right. You've got a good fullback, you know, in terms of Vili. But now the problem will the ball eventually get to those wingers and use them, you know, in the absence of M. Now, if you look in the absence of Arm, he was there, soft touches, you know, had uh, flair, had you know, could think in a, you know at the spell of the moment. Mm you know, a, a pass that no one would ever pass, you know, to, to, to let us go and score in the corner. So that's the problem. If you look at Andre Estes and if he gets the ball, he just goes straight and, he, you know, he's got a problem with passing, you know, on his outside. Jesse Creel as well. I mean, but what I liked about Jesse, I have to say, against Argentina, explosive run, broke the line, and then he fed to Mapimpi, who went on to score. So I'm quite happy to see, you know, that type of game from Jesse Creel. But for me, I also feel South Africa has to select its best team throughout this entire World Cup. I think for us to get the momentum, it will be a week in, week out, and then by injuries, you've got to just bring in replacement. We no longer have the luxury of resting players against a Romania. You've got to think that post-Romania, you've got Ireland. What do you do? If you rest, you go into a game against Ireland, you big trouble. Post, you know, Ireland, you play mm -hmm. Tonga. After Tonga, you go into the big one. It's either France or New Zealand. Should we go through in that Group D, in that Group B matches? So for me, it's important. If you go to the World Cup, you start with your first 15. You've got to play with them throughout the group stages and make certain changes. That's why I'm a bit disappointed we went with the four scrum off because I'm thinking oh, you know, come back we don't the need break. that. We don't come back from that. the break, Tandem, as well as NASA with that, with the four scrum offs, because I know that you did highlight it as we were watching. And maybe chat a little bit about how you can 
look at different combinations, and, and it impressed me when watching the Argentina game just how a Leboc was able to find Moody, and they changed the game somewhat. So very unpredictable in terms of how they're doing it. Join the conversation. Be a part of it. It is hashtag MSW right here on 947, Rise FM, Voom FM, and so it in life. Yeah, we've got to congratulate. You know, when somebody tells you that they're going to come back with 20 medals, and they do exactly that, they come back with 20 medals. Uh, thank you so much for that. And well done to the athletes. I mean, it's, it was a wonderful showing. I've got to give them credit. As they returned back from the World University Games uh, that were held in China, uh, they got seven bronze medals, 11 silver, and two gold medals. Uh, so in the end, yeah, you deliver on your, on your promises. So great leadership. When somebody keeps talking about where is the leadership, uh, you've got leaders of that caliber. Just having a quick look at what's happening on Twitter. Uh, Nuru says, competent side, just don't feel the same. It says, we can't go all the way this time around. Uh, so many other teams have evolved and progressed. Uh, the gap between the teams has uh, definitely narrowed, and I hope I can eat my words, though. Have they evolved? Have we lagged behind? Uh, I think as we're heading to the break, this point was being raised, and I'll raise it with both. My guest here tonight, Tando Manana, as well as Nas Boita on the line. Good evening, Rob. Good evening, Tando Manana. Uh, my name is Akilen Johannesburg. I think from the squad that was selected, it's as good as we got. Um, just the area of concern is the fly half position with Hundred being injured. Uh, we've got four scrum halves. I'm not sure if we're going to need all of them, but hey, I'm not the coach here. My concern is also the, the quality of uh, uh, union rugby we played. I mean, we played the URC. Um, and I, I personally feel that um, unless you play the, uh, the, the, the unions in, in New Zealand, you, you are not thoroughly tested. Yes, I mean, uh, the, 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 the Stormers lost in the finals, but I still think that you need to measure yourself against um, the, 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 the unions in New Zealand. And um, I think for me, I mean, New Zealand will always be champagne of world rugby. And if you watched the last uh, match that we lost, 35-20, we were on the back foot. We caught our wake up in the second half of which is the same mistake that we did in 2019 in the first pool game against them. They got the points on the board, they put us under pressure, we made mistakes. So that's always going to be something that we need to um, rectify if we meet them. Should we uh, go to the knockout matches, we need to be on the front foot all the time, put them under pressure, minimize the mistakes, and I think we might stand a good chance in uh, retaining the world title. Sakila Jonas, thanks, bye. Sakila and Joburg, thank you so much indeed. Maybe Nas on your side. Uh, yeah, saying that New Zealand's going to be the champagne of the World Cup once again, as they've normally been in previous ones. But the issue of the four scrum halves, needed or not, what, what do you think has been the thinking behind it? Um, I actually don't don't really know. It was quite a surprise when uh, Robert when I saw that. Um, but just coming back quickly um, before the break, uh, talking about the midfield. Yes, we've got a. Powerful midfield, but they not play makers. And I absolutely agree uh, with the comment uh, before the break is, you know, we've got exploding outside players. But the unfortunate thing is the way we play is we wait for something extremely special by a Colby or by a Mampipi or by a Orenser. We don't create, but the midfield... Uh, is the power midfield. That's the way we play. So the, the midfield is not going to be uh, players setting up the players on the outside. That's why we do have a little bit of a question mark, and that's why I mentioned to you, it's, Robert, it's depends, it depends on how we're going to play. If we're going to play the power game, then the midfield absolutely will be... Will be uh, I want to say, overpowering the opposition. When New Zealand totally play a different game, let's be fair. And uh, we've seen also Ireland lately play a different game. They create where we don't really play like that because we play slightly different. And I thought in the last uh, championship, we actually missed uh, the sort of, I want to say, the pull out at fly off that can draw attention onto him and create a little bit of space on the outside. And that's where I like the way Marnie started playing is 
people need to start watching him first before they can start moving around. So, yes, he can create uh, space for players on the outside. But what you also want is with that, you want your uh, centre pair to be like that. And if you look at the three centres, all powerful, powerful players. We know they're attacking the advantage line, but they're not really going to be the great handlers of the ball by drawing the opposition, stop the inside players going across, and then create the space on the outside. No, it's an important point. And, and I think I was just mentioning as well, just going to the break, Tando, and on the back of what Nasser just said, said if Lebok gets to play with that flair, and I mentioned him and Moody and how they were linking up almost telepathically in a way, do you believe, though, that you would give the youngster a start? First match day. Libok? Yeah. Libok and Moody. Look, Libok is your first choice flyer. So yeah. He, yeah. He'll, he'll always be yeah. pencil in the starting 50 now. Um, um, up until something happens to him, yeah. you've got a Damien Willem, sir, who's your utility stroke fly half sort of type of a replacement player within the squad. Now, if we're talking about wings, remember, Rob, you've got uh, a firing uh, Kurt Lee Aaron, so you've got a firing Cheslin Colby. So those are your go-to wingers who are on form, and who are able to sort of execute. What you have in Mapimpi, though, yeah. uh, you've got a strong runner, best finisher we have in the country, uh, a man who's finding his form again. He's got two more games. We don't know how selection will work. If you look at a Kenan Mood, he's able to play for you at 13, he's able to play at 14, and fullback. So you've got a versatile player, uh, depending on your game. I mean, Nas has mentioned Ireland. So if we want to really play, we've got to play aerial balls, uh, ball type of a game plan, then he fits in the in the puzzle very well instead of maybe a, a, a Kirtley or, or, or a Mapimpi because now you're going to go with your cross kicks and he's got the height, he's got the speed and the defense. So you don't worry about that because this is a player that can defend exceptionally well. He's got the speed and he's got the height in the air. So I think in terms of our back three, we're quite sorted and we, yeah. we're very much solid. We've got four wingers. So we've taken four wingers. But out of those four wingers, you've got actually all of them except for Mapimpi, that can play any position, fullback, or they can play on the wing. That, for us, is a big, big plus. So being versatile is, is great. You, you both mentioned Mapimpi. Yeah. Le, let me just maybe zero in on why a lot of people were looking at him as a, a doubt for selection. Yeah. Um, and, and you heard, I think, the biggest roar today at, you know, in yeah. Randburg had to do with Mapimpi. Yeah. And whether he's popular or not, whether it's because people are just relieved that he got the nod, yeah. I don't know. Why was he a doubt? It's not about a doubt. I think people create perception. Mm. If you create a perception and you focus or you zoom in on one player, and unfortunately that player was my pimpy. No one zoomed in on Mostet, who's been out of form, but he goes to the World Cup. I'm just making an example is that the players that are within the squad that no one zoomed in or no one got them to be mentioned on social platform or from the sort of the, you know, the critiques that sit on the couch and become coaches or selectors. But I just feel my pimpy knows that he's not at his best. He's been at his best for South Africa. But also I think the pressure that these youngsters are bringing in, the debutants, Kurt Lee and Cannon, is going to open his eyes where he's got to fight every day <coughs> to remain in the starting 15. Because we know he became the first player to score in a Rugby World Cup final for South Africa. We know what he's done. You know, he started most of his uh, test matches for the Springboks. That's quite important for mm -hmm. him. But also now, when we ask him to draw that experience that he's gained since playing for the Springboks, that's the time that he's got to really man up and really make sure that he retains his place. Failing which, Kurtley Arense will take that jersey and run with it. Then it sort of then takes him out of contention because he's not a versatile player. He only plays one position, and that's uh, the position that is currently playing at left wing. He's a finisher. He's got the speed. Nothing else. He offers you nothing thereafter. But I think for me, if he fixes his defensive fra you know, uh, fatalities, then he's back into where we want him to be because the speed is there, and I think also the finishing skills he does have or the prowess thereof he does have. But for me, I'm quite comfortable, Rob. Mm. As I said earlier, and I'm saying this to Nas as well, is that we've got a very strong starting 15. We just have to know, should something happen in the backup players, if we've got enough that can take us through. We've got a very tough Rugby World Cup. It has to be said, people really think that we've got it easy this time around. We don't. I mean, post the quarterfinal, we then go into 
oh. another big one before we go into the into the defense. So I'm happy that we face with those challenges. Yeah. I think South Africa as a nation and as a team, they know what they're up against. That's why Rassi and Jack have been plotting and planning in terms of how we're going to go around defending our Rugby World Cup title. So for me, I'm quite happy. Just a bit sad, but injuries are part of the game. That mm -hmm. can't be taken away. It's part of the game. But I'm also happy to see those names will be within the surroundings of the team, not with the team in the World Cup, because they, are none, yeah. they will be with, within the, outside the, uh, outside the, they can't be part yeah. of the team. Sure. So, but they will be within France. They will be within when they go for a camp. They go into an <laughs> island where they start preparing. So everyone will be there, but they won't be going to France. Uh, to be with the team because of the World Rugby regulations. All right, Nas, maybe just your comment on uh, Magazola Mapimpi, the experience that he does have, that he does bring in. <coughs> were you surprised? Were you one of those that said, well, what's the big fuss about? He needs to go. Absolutely. Uh, I was one of those that uh, never questioned his ability. That's one. I think he played in a team that didn't really play all that well during the URC. Uh, because we all expected a lot more from uh, from the Sharks. And um, and sometimes it happens. Sometimes you just play in a team that's not playing well, and then people start looking uh, for reasons. And uh, I was extremely surprised that uh, there were people had question marks about him as, uh, as part of the group. Um, so uh, I was also glad to hear his name. Uh, it is extreme. It is true that um, <clears throat> you know he is a left wing, but the thing is, uh, he's already proved that he's a fantastic finisher. And the thing is, and I think sometimes uh, we need to be a little bit more careful on talking about too many utilities, uh, utility players, and they can play here, there, whatever. What you need uh, is you if you want to win a World Cup. Apart from your reserves that can play a major part, you need 15 specialist players in a position. We can't fiddle too, too much uh, with, oh, this guy can do this and this guy can do that, whatever. And that's why um, I'm absolutely in an agreement. Lebok needs to start. Why? Because Lebok is a fly-off, I think. We all see Damien as a fly-off, but also a fullback, And that's the problem I have, that but. But he can also play fullback. I, I believe you need, in certain positions, you need a specialist. And as long as he is doing his job 100%, that's all you can ask for. Um, if you need, if you need to move somebody, it's like, let's be fair, we can play Colby. Somebody asked me the other day. Mm. Yeah, but he's been playing for his club overseas, also fullback, whatever. The, the question that I put on the table immediately, what's the best for South Africa? The best for South Africa is you must be on the wing. And that's as simple as that. And that's how I look at it. And uh, people differ. You know, we all differ in our opinions, but I see him as a wing. I don't see him as a, as a fullback. Uh, and that's it. But if something happens to a Billy, he would be an absolute fantastic fullback if need be. But there, Damien can also step in. So you've got to have your utilities. But uh, Robert, if we want to win this World Cup, and to be honest, we can. I'm a little bit disappointed with the three injuries. I never thought Pollard was that serious, that he was excluded today. Uh, um, uh, I... I saw what happened over the weekend, but I thought uh, maybe it's not that serious. And now we realize it's a little bit more. Uh, Luit, I feel sorry for because, you know, he actually did quite quite a lot and he played well. Uh, and unfortunately, because of illness, um, you, know, he, there's, you know, he's excluded. But, uh, you know, Erge luckily is back. If you look at Marvin Oria, I thought, Played extremely well. John Klein, I must be honest, uh, I knew a little bit about him. Saw him play for Ireland, but uh, the uh, couple of uh, games he played, I thought he actually played very well. So, uh, you know, and the thing I think we all agree on, this is not going to be a World Cup where you rest players uh, because you want to 
you know, save them. We, we can't save players. The, you know, and the World Cup, you need to perform, what's it, six games, seven games, six games, and that's it. So, yeah. you know, seven games. Let them just play seven games and they can rest They can rest for the rest of their lives if they want to after that. That's uh, what you give a World yeah. Cup, don't you? No, so you give it your all, whatever the, the situation it, yeah. is. You give it your all. And yeah, like you rightfully say, lots of voice notes as well, Nas and, and Tando, that are coming through uh, just lamenting those injuries with Henry uh, Pollard. Uh, you know, the diagnosis that we got from the doctors was that it was a cough injury uh, that he did sustain. Mm. Lukanyu Am as well, uh, suffering the knee. Uh, and I know, Tando, you, you've got quite a bit to say about that and just mm. his involvement in the games pre the selection of that squad. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Well, lots of very honest uh, conversations happening uh, via social media platforms. People listening very attentively to the conversation we're having right here. Uh, Nas Boyta, my guest, uh, Tando Manana, my guest, both of them uh, former Springbok players in their own right, broadcasters in their own right, I could even say coaches in their own right analyzing what we've seen and heard today with the selection and the announcement of the Springbok squad heading off to France to do duty uh, for South Africa. So just a mixed bag of some of these uh, uh, WhatsApp voice notes. I know from your side, Deboko, uh, very sad to see Lukanyo Am. Uh, you made mention off air, Tando, just yeah. about him. I mean, we were watching him play um, at Loftus not so long ago, headed off. He was not part of the advanced squad, so he played here. Then he went across mm. uh, to play against New Zealand and then shipped right back again to do duty here at home. Has all of that now taken its toll? Yeah, it has, Rob. I think um, Lukanyo Am, 2022 player of the year, yeah. he doesn't have to prove himself. You know, I just get worried that he's had to, you know, be put in such a corner to play all four of the games, you know, all four games that we, we had to play in the rugby championship and the one in Argentina. I but just why do you think that happened, though? Look, I think there was a bit of a worry that his, his form has sort of dipped a yeah. little bit. There was that chat, so they wanted to give him more game time so that he's more sharper in the Rugby World Cup, but it has come back to bite everyone, coaching the player himself. Mm. I think, remember, Rob, anything to do with the knee, you know, it takes uh, time. It, it takes time. Yeah. If you look at Sia... I was worried because you've got to look at a six to nine month period, you know, and also the knee has to be properly, properly recovered mm. because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of, you know, for you going into the tech, like Lukanyo M, he was cleaned out, the knee twisted, and we don't know what the extent of that injury is. It could be a, a knock. But for me, all I'm saying is he was a bit rushed in. He could have played maybe against Australia. No need for him to go to New Zealand, play Jesse there. He was already there, but Jesse was not even on the bench. So I think we, 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 we're sort of learning that at times, you know, what you know is what you know. Mm. And I think we also know what type of player Lukanyo was. And also for me, what I'm very much uh, sort of is we've never had someone who's always been the next guy post uh, should something happen to Lukain. We always thought that this is a player that can be with us for the longest time and at this critical juncture he's not going to the World Cup. Now all of a sudden we depend on a Jesse Creel but saying that I'm also very happy for a Marvin Ori. Why I'm saying that Rob is you've got Lord Diaga who was the main or the brain trust of our line out of our you know, line out calls of reading that. Marvin Ori has won a URC title with the Stormers. Marvin Ori has played a final defending that title, losing to Munster. Marvin Ori has changed. Many people don't see that. Marvin Ori is actually very good at analyzing opposition uh, line out jumpers. And also he makes the call. So we have not really lost, uh, we've just lost maybe the physical you know, prowess that uh, a Lua Diaga would also maybe give you. But in terms of height, in terms of calls, in terms of reading the opposition, mm -hmm. I feel a guy like Marvin Ori is more or less on par with a Lua Diaga. Maybe just a smaller bit of height, but I'm just quite happy. Had we lost Lua and we did not have a Marvin Ori, I would have been worried. If you've got an Arches name and you've got an Eben, uh, you know, in the team, and you've got a Jean Klein, you would have been worried because who would then take charge of the lineup? So I think Marvin will also feature very prominently in the Rugby World Cup in the absence of Lua Diaga, just because of that, because he's very good at that. And also, this is a player that has been 
been signed by Perpignan, a French club, for two years. So what it means is, you know, he's not even gone to the World Cup, yeah. but there's been eyes from the French teams to sign him away from the Stormers. Now the Stormers are taking, sort of now having a, an, an opportunity to look further for a lock. So I'm quite happy that we have that in terms of our front row. Other than that, I think we're quite solid in terms of our starting eight. I feel Sia has to start against Wales so that we see how far and how long it can the knee can hold before he plays against you know an all black side not from the bench that's the problem you play him off the bench you don't know what's going to happen you've got to start him so that you exactly know that yeah you've got a fit captain that can lead us into the world cup so high impact from the beginning is is the proposition here from Tandabanana. 10 minutes uh, to go a lot of people on social media as well is saying unnecessary rugby championship has cost Lukanyo Am uh, they could have done without it especially so close to a world cup maybe your, your thoughts about that Nas because I mean, he's the number one trending player. He's not been selected. Uh, yeah, he will be traveling like we've stressed. Uh, that injury has come back to plague not only him, but all of us. Yeah, but Robert, the, the, the problem is um, the same can happen in the first game in the World Cup. Um, you know, we've seen it in the past where players do go to a World Cup and they get injured in the first game. That is just part of the game. It's just unfortunate. But I'm glad to see that he is um, actually traveling and he will be uh, around the, you know, the, the box squad. I actually went to look at uh, the laws of um, how can a player be replaced for, uh, by a player from the outside. And it's extremely clear that uh, it must be a serious injury uh, or compassionate uh, leave. That's the only two reasons when you can replace a player. Because when I saw the names, I thought, okay, what, how can a player be replaced? So now we know. You yeah. know that those are the only two mm. Uh, reasons uh, when they will allow that. And uh, the player that's been replaced can't get back into the squad. So it's a permanent replacement, if I can put it that. So, um, you but know... The, does that worry and, you, and, though, Nas? Just on the back of that, and, and, and I know, you know, purely the reasons why you went back and checked all of those rules, just to make yourself quite clear in terms of... The, does it worry you, though? Because even with the selected squad, you do find some of the players were just on the brink. On the brink. We saw uh, even Eben Etzebeth, as he was alighting to the stage, he looked like there was a bit of a limp there, uh, unless I was seeing things. But all I'm saying is that there are also some players there now who might not even fit into that category of a serious injury that would warrant that replacement. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's, that's always the worrying aspect. But, um, you know, I'm just one of those guys that... Um, you know, we've selected 33 guys. We've put all the, our trust in those 33 that they will, um, you know, they will bring the, the World Cup back. They will be the first team to defend it. Um, because I was very, very confident before, um, you know, uh, today's announcement. And I'm still confident. That's what I want to say. I'm still confident. Um, I'm and Paula. I think they are a serious, serious miss. But unfortunately, um, you know, they're not there at the moment. And that's what we need to ex uh, accept. But the thing is, it's an absolute fantastic opportunity uh, for somebody else to walk away from the World Cup, as we've seen in the last World Cup, um, as an absolute hero and a star. And, uh, and I think... I think really um, what we need to, as supporters, really put our our full trust in in Marnie Lebok and uh, and support him. But the thing is, what we don't want now is um, in the two warm up games, uh, if there's a little bit of a hiccup, Robert, is to start finding mistakes because anybody can sit and find a mistake and say, "Yeah, but." Um, I've told you something like this and I've told you something like that. And, and unfortunately, that's where I say, no, no, we've got to turn this and we must show our, firstly, our appreciation for the 33 that's been selected. And now we must put the trust in them and just believe they can go and do the job. And, uh, and they know, don't you make a mistake? They know. Mm. There's a lot of pressure on them. A lot of people expect them uh, because we, 
definitely going to the World Cup, uh, not as an underdog. Uh, that that I can tell you. If you look at our forwards, we can't go to the World Cup as an underdog. Uh, the the most important thing is, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, is how are we going to apply our talent and in which structures we're going to put that talent to the maximum that we can get the best results. Absolutely. Nels Boiter chatting to us right here on hashtag MSW Tandamanana in studio. We reach the final four minutes of the show. And as we start to wrap things up here, uh, Tando, you talked about Siakoli, the captain has got to start against Wales. Would you say the same for a guy like Nche as well as Hendricks? Uh, I mean, they haven't played in the past four games for the box. Uh, should they also be thrown in so that we can observe? if they are going to go the full hog when they get to the World Cup, or how should they approach those two? The nice thing about Ox, um, Rob, is, um, you know, he's had a very good season. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunate that he managed to get the, the um, injury, but I'm happy to know that he's, uh, he's out there and recovered. So he's a very, you know, big part of, of the front rower. I think uh, in terms of from the loose head side, he's, he's, a, he's a very much good replacement if you look at how things have panned out. So Stephen Kitchoff will then st sort of staff and have Ox on, on the bench. Uh, quite versatile. Rasa could even start with an Ox and chair. So for me, I'm quite happy uh, that he's going to the World Cup. He's just got so much in him. Um, and I'm sure he'll be beaming, uh, you know, to be in France and in a starting in a match day 23 to show, you know, why he's there. He's a very good player across, uh, you know, across the board. So I'm quite happy with his inclusion. If you look at Jaden, I always felt that Jaden, I mean, Jaden, uh, you know, towards last year, uh, sort of uh, overtook uh, FAF de Klerk as possibly the number one scrummer for South Africa. Unfortunately, injury hit whilst playing for the Sharks, which was a long-term injury. You know, his father passed on. So I think mentally they had to work with him just to get over that. But I think uh, for me, he's a quality scrum off. Um, you know, Grant Williams, too, is a quality scrum off, grown in stature. And that's because that uh, Jaden Hendricks was in there. So he picked up, uh, you know, the opportunities were on the table. So he's used them. And for me, one thing about him, he's also the quickest player in the team you know, uh, surprisingly. So we, we've got those type of players that can actually, you know, from the bench, just turn it around, even if things were not going for us. We know what we have in Faf. Uh, we'll see at the World Cup if he can have a very good form. But I think competition amongst those three is going to be of great international standards, knowing three of them are three different type of scrum off, and it depends on the game we're going to play. But the man who's mostly suited, I, I would say, like Nasser is saying, we have a Libok, would be a guy like a Grant Williams. It's a pity we couldn't see him at Ellis Park. But I just feel if we're going to really make big impact at nine, those three are going to be the cog of this team and they have to carry us through uh, in terms of right replacement from the coaches, but also choosing our best two scrum off for the tournament. All right, let me squeeze a minute there for you, Nas. Your final thoughts? Uh, just quickly, I think what needs to be done is we need to show very quickly confidence in who's the starting 15 because players do play on confidence and um, and whatever, whoever they put the trust in must know. You know, I'm the starting number nine, I'm the starting number 10, I'm 12, I'm 13. The quicker we can sort that out because what we don't want to hear is going to the first game and then after the game, uh, yeah, but we didn't have time to prepare. We do have time, but uh, we need to show confidence very quickly in who we want to start the 15th. Fly half of a different order. Nas Boeta in his heyday, former Springbok. Thank you so much indeed for your time. And I'm sure we're going to be tapping into that brain even during the World Cup. Thank you so much, Nas. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Cheers to Nas. You're heading off to an awards ceremony, sir? Yes, sir. you up for an award yourself. <laughs> Congratulations for the nomination. <laughs> Palisa didn't wish me well. <laughs> Hopefully she will post the, post this interview. Yeah, yeah Rob. Yeah. Um, you, you've done, some, an, you've done an amazing job at the, the Blue Bulls company. Yeah. yeah. And you're up for the Employee of the Year, I Empl believe. Yeah, Employee of the Year. Um, that's quite a nice feat, Rob, you know, from, from my peers. Uh, you know, who've seen the work that I've been doing. So Unbeaten with the ladies, right? Unbeaten. Major scores, all round, all season. All bonus points. 
That's crazy. All the full bags of points that were available, we've taken them. One more game against the Lions this week in Alberton. And then we go, the ladies go into the semis and then the final on the 26th. Three digit victories, even at times, eh? Twice we've done that. That is crazy. Yeah. You are crazy. You're a wonderful guest. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Good to I be on air. Good I to be on air. The voice is still there. I'm happy. Thank you. I'm happy the Room voice divider. is still there. Thank you, Pa. We thank Don't you, close ba. the tabs, Rob. No tabs to Don't be Don't close the traps, my man. There's no water this time. Yeah. Robert Marawa. Robert Marawa. Live on 947.